Wrestling fans around the corner and around the world, I'm Dan Marotti along with MJ in the house, otherwise known as that rocker Marty Jannetty. Wrestling fans, wrestling insiders, party with Marty is next. Wrestling fans, the summer is heating up in Boston Wrestling with a new schedule. Tuesdays at 9 p.m., it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Then Thursdays at 9 p.m., put the women and kids to bed. It's Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty featuring WWE legend Marty Jannetty. That's not enough. We've got three big live streams coming up. This Saturday night, August 22nd, during NXT TakeOver. And the following night, Sunday, August the 23rd, during SummerSlam, former WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty joins us to give a legend's point of view during two of the biggest events of the summer. Then next Wednesday, August the 26th, WWE Hall of Famer Brutus the Barber Beefcake joins us for a live stream during WWE NXT. Both superstars will be conducting live cyber autograph signings and meet and greets those nights so you can help keep wrestling legends working. Forget about sports entertainment when you can relive the memories and legends of professional wrestling on Wrestling Insiders. Subscribe for free to our YouTube channel. Share with your fellow wrestling fans and give the shows a big thumbs up so we can bring you more great wrestling content. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lawndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, this is a great day. It is SummerSlam weekend when this episode is going to premiere. Uh, as you can tell, this is not Mr. USA Tony Atlas, unless he went through some kind of an amazing uh, transformation up in Auburn, Maine, from the episodes we've had on his porch. But Marty is not replacing Tony. He's just joining the team. Marty, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Well, we're touching. We, not, we, we can't. The elbow? Yeah. I think that's oh, what we did at the airport. Yeah. Let me cover this. We leave yeah. in again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We don't know what to do here. This is the first taping we've had in studio since February, so well, you know, is it's it really? kind of yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's when Tony comes down like this, we take here, several. You wear my mask. No, don't worry about that. <laughs> we taped several episodes, so when Tony was here in February, we were set through much. Yeah. And then you know the world went nuts with coronavirus. Yeah, so, man. The Chinese people. The fans oh, have. Oh, didn't mean to say that. The fans <laughs> yeah. have wanted to know, Marty, what have you been doing during the coronavirus? Playing with my cat a lot. You got a cat? Yeah. Oh, all right. We Swaggy don't want to hear about what happened with the cat in Maine. But <laughs> no, I'll... don't do that. <laughs> no, Swaggy, Swaggy's my buddy. Thank God I got him because I live by myself. Uh, can't have no girls. Yeah, I'm single. So usually was having parties and you know, wild, <laughs> wild things going on. Uh, can't do none of that now. Uh, Why? Well, everybody down, you know, Georgia, everybody's. Oh, oh, I see, because of the yeah. quarantine. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you didn't have a girlfriend when this all started. I see what you mean. Well, I did, but it was a lot of them. And, oh. <laughs> and they slowly, as, as the yeah. pandemic kept going, because everybody thought it'll stop. It'll slow down. Yeah, right. As it kept going, the less girls were coming by and less and less and less. And then I had one that was defiant, like, nah, I ain't worried about all that. I, and she didn't, then she called it. I went, nah, you can't come over. <laughs> she was going to come over anyway. I ain't going to say her name, but. Not that y'all would know her. But yeah, so I'm sitting there now with my cat. Uh, we sit and watch TV, made no sports. I mean, it's like, I'm glad I don't carry a gun. <laughs> I just grab it and say, Swaggy, you pull it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, that's why my hair, by the way, let me explain this Captain Caveman Genetti haircut. I ain't worried, you know, I see on TV all the celebrities doing their own hair. And I see what it looks like afterwards. Like, nah, I just let it grow out. And before I do something like this, go get it cut. And so I did. I uh, went to get it cut yesterday before coming here. Mm -hmm. And the lady's out of business because she had to close her shop so long. So that's why the Captain Cave man, <coughs> what to do? Got a hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you visited our good friends at Noel Salon, noelsalon.com in Malden, Massachusetts, we'll have to. To do that next time you come up, because hopefully you're going to be a regular up here. And, well, I, by the time we're done, I think they're going to be long gone. Oh, yeah? They don't have the uh, the wrestling work. Well, I shouldn't say you, that. Oh, you're you know, planning on wanna, being here that long? I don't want Well, they're out of there early, <laughs> believe me. But, Marty, uh, you know, I, we talked about it in the car last night. Another question that the fans had asked was, when was the last time you wrestled? And, you know, you have uh, reasons why right now you can't. Yeah. And I hated to hear can't, it, and I hated to see it, because it reminded me of the Sheik. 
Can I tell it? Sure, tell the story. Um, well, I would show it, but I'm afraid to move. And I might go out of frame if I move. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you all a shot of this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Don't make fun of my New Orleans uh, Saints socks because I am an Atlanta Falcons fan. and That's a no-no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, see the... I don't know if y'all going to be able to see it. I don't want to dirty up the chair and see how this is. Glantz, can we see that in the, the control room, brother? If not, maybe come out and zoom in. I don't know how long you can hold that position like you're a football or something. I can hold it, but I don't want the people at home getting bored. <laughs> Bam. No, when I saw you on. going into that, um, the convenience store last night, it, all it did, it reminded me of the Sheik. It was just brutal seeing you walk like Gimping that. It's, like that, yeah. It's almost like you're walking on your ankle and not your foot. It's like the leg bone coming right here, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, look, the foot's over there, the bone's right now, over here. Now, is this, is it just something it's that's all, accumulated? He's going in right now to switch the camera. Has this accumulated over time, or was it one particular injury? I know you I said think that, it's gotten worse and worse and worse as, as it went. I used to jog a lot uh, for conditioning, stamina, mm -hmm. um, that, that my whole life, because I've been an athlete since 12 sure, years sure. old. Sports, I say it's sports. We good? He got you, brother. You can sit down yeah, again. Okay. Um, how much are these? Can I buy one? <laughs> no, the, those aren't cheap, believe me. They're not? No. Well, not, there isn't much in here that's cheap. There isn't much in here that's cheap. No, I didn't call you broke. I'm just saying I don't want to see any money. I want the money going in your wallet, not out of it. Shit, your wallet's got a hole in it. But, uh, yeah, all the years of jogging, you know, and being 220, 230 pounds, now I'm down a little bit. Uh, but back then, and I mean every day, uh, three, four miles, Fuck, excuse my language. Over over four was well, it was rough, but still, that's a lot for a heavier man. Sure. Every day, I, I, every day, and uh, it's just the pounding, the pounding, the pounding, and I had flat feet, so that didn't help. And then you can imagine all the years of jumping off top ropes, like even a cage once or twice. That's pretty cool. Where'd you get that? You know the lady, good uh, friend of ours, Sweet Sue. Oh, okay. Oh, Long that, it's, that's, that's where we cool. get all these gimmicks from. Sue, I want one. <laughs> We've had that for a while. I don't know if they make them anymore. But, um, yeah. but so, yeah, jumping off things like this. Yeah. You know, when, when Sean and I was first getting in, you know, even WWE at the time, or F, I'm sorry, um, there was a time when there wasn't mats around the ring. So when you were yeah. jumping off and whatever you might be doing, concrete floor, just like this, how oh, that hurt. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I just yeah. broke the other ankle. But, um, yeah, you're landing on concrete. We used to make jokes about you know, people hurting and then telling us, hey, go get some leave. You know, it works for me. Yeah, but when's the last time you took a 10-foot backdrop on a concrete floor? It's one thing, <laughs> yeah, leave is great if you have a headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, right? or you scratch yourself, <laughs> yes, I guess. They don't even work for me for that. But anyway, yeah, all the years of jumping up, because that was our thing. Sean and I come in, the smallest guys in WWF. So we were like, we got to do something, but we can't out punch and kick them. <laughs> yeah, they're, right. They're all six foot six and 300 pounds muscled up. What is our little ass is going to do to them? <laughs> we got to do flips and speed bump things. Uh, but all those years, it took its toll. Like Sean, I think his mainly merit the time he hit the corner of the ring, messed his back up real bad. Oh, when the Undertaker in the casket match, yeah. yeah. Is that what it was? He landed on the corner yeah. of the casket, yeah. That, that, but, all, but at the same time, all the mirrors, he was jumping off the top ropes to the floors. And it's just, it's, the human body ain't made to do that. No, <laughs> no, it's, you're not action figures. Um, sometimes I feel like them. <laughs> right? <laughs> sometimes. But anyway, yeah, so it's, that one, this one is actually, it hurts as much because it's so bone on bone. I went to yeah. a, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. McCluskey, Lee McCluskey, one of the best in the world. So studied with Dr. Andrews. Everybody knows. Oh, really? Him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, they both were right there in Columbus, Georgia, my hometown. So when they wrestled in high school, college, I would always go see them when there was any problems and stuff. They always looked after me. But so he 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 he's a friend of mine. He said, "I'll take care of him." You know, he's my buddy. You ain't got to worry about paying me because I don't have no health insurance, and that stuff is expensive. Welcome to life. Yeah. After getting having the six-figure contracts, no health insurance. Hey, I tried the Obamacare. I'm, I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off right now, and I'm not trying to do that. Just, I'm just be being, yourself. That's I'm all. Just being honest. I, went, I tried the Obamacare issue thing or you know uh, route, and it, it strung me out for six months. 
To just get on it, you mean? Uh, no, no. Like when I would go in to see the doctor, you had to wait six months to get well, the appointment. Well, she would tell me one thing, and, and then like come back in three, four, five weeks, you know, or give me a date and yeah. come back way later, and X-ray it and do something. And wait another three, four, five weeks. That way, six months of that, and she finally says, "Yeah, your ankle is the worst." I, this was my buddy too, Doctor McCluskey, told me the same thing. He goes. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this a while. That's the worst ankle I've ever seen. Wow. Because I don't know. I know you're a tough you know, wrestler and all that. And we played football together in high school really? and college. So he knew me from that, too. He goes, I know your pain threshold is higher than most. He goes, because nobody else could have walked in here like that. Uh, For the fan, just so I can describe it, to, from my eyes, it reminded me so much of the Sheik. Because like I Cause again, told you, we, you know, we got into the, the car accident together. And as a result, his ankle, it's almost like when he walks, he walks... He walks on the ankle, and the foot is shifted yeah. over here. So this is like his foot. So he's walking on all ankle, which is why the Sheik really doesn't leave the house outside of a couple of really, you know, high-tier paydays over the course of maybe one or two a year. But with you, it reminded me of the same thing. He really can't walk at all now. You, you're still trying to, to navigate through it, and it's just it's, it sucks to see. Well, you know, and with Sheik, I used to see him. You know, me and him are boys. We, we've got some stories. <laughs> um, but he... he um, when I was when he was getting bad, you know, he has that big high cane like Moses yep. had, yep. and he and I would see him and I'm like, God, that's so horrible. I hated seeing that for him. Little I know, some years later, I'm I'm looking for them high canes too, to to help the walking. But the thing about it is is it's pain all the time. It's just some days, like I was telling you earlier, yep. some days like today happen to be a, a rather bad one. Um, there's good days or bad days, but even a good day, it hurts. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know? And I feel the pain because you've seen yeah, how dilapidated my body is, yeah. yeah. Even on a good day, you hurt. And then when on a bad day, I mean, that, that you just turn up the volume and it's, it's unbearable. And then the way you perceive life, you know, I learned that by this, um, is just so different. It's like, even if it's a good, imagine, it's, it's like putting on some sunglasses and they're all scratched up. But you're looking at the beach and the beautiful scenery. But they're still scratched up. It's like, pfft, oh, that's nice, kind of, yeah. Dang, these glasses. Was this sort of that with your health? It's like, when you're in pain all the time. Even good things are not quite as good. It, it's one thing for wrestling fans to observe uh, and learn about the history of the great industry. You know, some that may be amused by the addiction problems that have come along with it. I don't but know what's until about these, it <laughs> Until the bodies have actually experienced it, there's really no room to judge. But, and that's the whole thing. Um, I don't know outside of wrestling, and, and many others, you know, I'm all into sports, everything. Even my, because my, I lived in New Orleans for a hot minute, Did so you? I, you know, I had to be a fan of New Orleans, um, my, my Saints Sox, but I love every sport, baseball, basketball, you know, all of it. Hockey, <clears throat> hockey at least, because down south we didn't, back when I was younger, we had to watch everything up here. You know, we, but, yeah. You didn't have anything local and you, to root for. And I'm sorry, I'm all over the map. But when I moved to Vegas, that was funny. They brought a hockey team out to the desert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're like, what are they going to do, skate on sand? I think it's a great city for it, but that's just one man's opinion. I'd uh, like they to won, see... you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they have the raid as well. I don't know if they're going to be any fans this year, but the L.A., I'm sorry, the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to start yeah, in yeah. September. Yeah, see, all that happened after I moved. It's like... <laughs> you would have stayed, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> He told me. I knew the Raiders were coming because they'd been talking about it for like four or five years. Yeah. Now it's finally happening. Um, what was we talking about the story? We're, we're talking about the foot. Well, you, we were talking about the fans that were act, asking how oh, active yeah, so, so you were in the ring. And you, you were telling in the car last night you had one, I think it was during one of the WrestleMania weekends. That was almost the straw that broke the camel's back and the ankle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I'll tell another one here in a minute, but just right. to finish the sports thing, oh, all right. for, for the fan can understand the, the abuse on the body. Um, all other sports, you know, football, the NFL is about as brutal as it gets. You're talking about, bam, you know, two bodies, you know, wham, uh, at full speed, and pff, that's going to hurt. <laughs> but the you know, adrenaline, just like yeah. wrestling, yeah. when we get slammed off the top uh, rope or suplex or superplex, Yes, the ring gives a little bit. It ain't quite as ah, that hurt. It ain't quite as hard as this. Uh, don't let me do that no more. <laughs> One more. God, uh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, what was I talking about? Sports. Oh, oh the suplex. I mean, 
It, gives, it has a little give. It has to, otherwise, it, you know, the, the Bundys, yeah. you know, rest of soul, uh, rest of soul, um, you know, break, you know, because there's, there's wood, you know, the things that are there. So it has a little give, but oh my God. It's not, a, tra it's like not a trampoline rings. like some yeah. experts say. And in, yeah. in boxing rings, when we have to accidentally use a boxing ring in some cities. You talk about stuff. Oh my yeah. God, it's like this floor. It's like the, ow, shoot. It's like this floor like that. <laughs> it's like that. Um, but so, you know, and what I, what I brought up the other sports for is like the NFL, and, and, and the hockey's pretty brutal, man. Yeah. They take some knockings. Um, but they got it this seasonal. <laughs> you know, they, they take their lumps and bruises, and, and then they get some, you know, we got a little t time between, and they have to. Uh, but wrestling, while it might not be as in, impactful on the body like the uh, NFL hits, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> it's still now, pretty as bad. someone that played college. And that's 300 days a year. Exactly. As someone that played college football, you know, you have a great athletic background. How would you compare the abuse on the gridiron compared to professional wrestling? Just, and just uh, try to explain, because I have something called bad luck. <laughs> yeah. hey, I mean, it, you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, let me scoot over. Yeah, scoot over, yeah. Maybe I should. <laughs> oh, uh, it's, it's like I, I use the analogy of boxing sometimes with my bad luck, because everybody's like, hey, Marty, it happens to all of us. Hey, you know, yeah, that happened to me. Yeah, that happened to me. I'm not new. I, I, I'm aware that it happens to everybody. But I get it all the time in every aspect of my life, not just, you know, bills or friends or, I mean, everywhere. And it's not a major thing. Somebody's like, you let that bother you with all the shit <laughs> that you've been through? Uh, and I said, it's not, it's not that one thing that happens. It's like boxing is jab, 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 jab. A jab ain't going to piss you off a little bit. Like, stop. But after about a thousand jab, 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 then it's like, gosh, damn. <laughs> then, then it starts to bother you. And it's the same way with, with wrestling. I mean, ain't none of them breaking, like, except for Sid. Remember that time he jumped off? Oh, my off God. His, oh, that was grotesque. He snapped yeah. he held his leg up. And yeah. from oh here down, God. was dangling. Just dangling, yeah. I didn't think he'd ever get in the ring again after yeah. that. Well, that take, you know, he had to go through a lot to, just to get to that point. Yeah. Right recovery time, yeah. I like old Sid. Man. He's a good friend. But uh, but yeah, man, it's it's the uh, the constant pounding of the body after 300 days. And you know what? Here's something. Here's something a lot of people don't understand. Unless you've done it, some business guys have to go through this routine, but they don't have to get slammed in the ring every night. It's you wake up at seven o'clock, six o'clock, whatever early, and catch your flight, go to the next city, and from there you rent a car. You go get your rent a car. Then once you get your car, you go find a place to eat. You know, you're you hungry. You go check in a hotel, and then you go to the gym. And then you get back home and take a shower and then go to the show. And then if you're goofies like me and uh, some of my partners were, I don't want to put nobody in trouble. Some of my tag partners were. You go to the clubs every night until 2 or 3 in the morning, and you wake up early if you sleep at all. And you repeat that routine day after day after day after day. That alone, let alone the slams and the suplexes and the super kicks, that alone will wear you out after 10 days. When, when I first went, am I talking too much? No. No, no, no. You sure? Absolutely. This is a talk show, right? It's, well, that's what we do. We're not, we're not, <laughs> yeah. If you and I were going to get in the ring to have a match, I don't think many people would be watching. Well, you don't think we're good? You might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky I can get out of bed. If you're good enough, you both are good. There you go. Well, you know what? Now that's going. Now I'm, again, I'm transitioning to a different story. I'm sorry, I'm all over the map. Hey, this is like you're like the white Tony. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say white face, but there I thought now they might throw some racist stuff on me. But um, they uh, uh shoot, I forgot why, why I was going to tell you this, but the, the, with the injury thing. Yeah. Um, I just stopped, actually, and I still love it. I just can't do it. I'm not going to go in and give a bad performance. So I stopped doing in-ring. You know, I'll still do a per, a personal appearances. If y'all remember that now, give me a call for personal appearances. Um, a seminars, I love doing those because I love teaching the if kids. If anyone comes across this and they're interested in reaching Marty and they don't know how, Shoot us an email, and we'd be happy to help set it up like we do with Tony. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Definitely. 
And uh, yeah, and I love, uh, you know, I ran a couple of wrestling schools, one in Houston um, and then one in Tallahassee. And, and love them, man. I, I love teaching the kids. That's, for me now, that I've slowed down, even before the ankles became what they did, might have sl when I got about 45-ish, might have slowed down a little bit. <laughs> And, and you know when you when you perform at top level all the time that you're you know you never want to give a bad show you give a hundred percent. If you can only go out and give eighty, it, you just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time Vince McMahon came up to me one time. I had Justin Bradshaw, I love him, man. Uh, a man that's been right in that very seat. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, he's, he's been, been here? here before. Yeah, he was actually intercontinental champion when he came in. Is that right? He was just finishing up with WWE. Yeah, two thousand and nine. You've had the show that long. Oh, the first, Sheik was the first one we had in 2004. Oh, come on, believe it. And that it. was the one that went on Howard Stern because he wanted to rape Brian Blair and Hogan. <laughs> With no teeth. <laughs> With a fake Olympic medal around his neck. That's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> I totally forgot what I was about to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see if I can maybe help uh, circle you back oh, in. And it. Let oh. me explain this too real quick. All right. Um, I've got a horrible case of ADHD, and as we've gotten older, I've found out it's gotten worse. I don't know about the medicine, like they say, what's the Adderall or something, but I tried that, and then it made it worse. Oh, <laughs> really? Mean, yeah, really, yeah, man, I, I can't stick. I can't, I love to read books, but I got to read two and three t pages at a time, and then come back a week later. <laughs> a 300-page yeah. book, Except for the one that the first one of Sean's, because I had to see what he said about me. Because <laughs> yeah. through that one, vested interest in that yeah, one. Yeah, and, and every other page, I'm like, come on, Sean. <laughs> and only, only not because it was something I was embarrassed about, is because it was not quite as accurate as it could have been. If that's being nice, you no, know, yeah, saying well, it in a nice way. I'm sure he's going to. I love Sean to death. I'm not talking him down, uh, but. Yeah. I, I don't want to, because I like him so much, I don't want to say <laughs> straight out lies in the book. <laughs> well, do you feel there were straight out lies in his book? I know book? it was. <laughs> All right, well, as Sean will come up on these various episodes, maybe you can correct the stories. Well, I, I'll give you an example. All right. And, and I probably shouldn't, but I'll do it anyway. Well, give us an example. And it's, it's all meant from, from the heart of, you know, just, I'm lovingly telling the truth. <laughs> there was a, uh, a time when, when Sean and I were, Man, I'm telling numbers, too, on this one. All right, let's see the numbers, we're, baby. We're, don't tell Sue Aitchison. No. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love her, I don't think she watches these. Sue, uh, I'm, I'm giving out numbers. I know we ain't supposed to do that. All right. But this was so many years ago. It was like 1990 or something. We, we, Sean and I had a... Are you texting me because my phone... No, no, not at all. I'm just... My uh, phone just vibrated. No, no, no. I'm just trying to get out to this. No, that was my phone. That was mine. No, it says your name. You're what are you telling me? Oh, tell them I think about the uh... time that one... No, oh, I ain't telling them that. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, what, what actually did happen, it was, was we were at a... Uh, we had had a meeting with Vince, and <laughs> somebody fell back there. They're really excited about the story, <laughs> yeah. aren't they? Or fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that. They, uh, we, we, uh, I, we, how you doing, man? Oh, that's, that's our friend T, I think. He's masked, though. Is that you, T? Yeah. All right, well, you're interrupting the story. but other than uh, that, I thought come, that was David Letterman. Come on down, grab a seat from up there, and join us, brother. All right, back to uh, the, this correction from the book. Yeah, uh, so uh, Sean, Sean, uh, we, oh, so we'd had a meeting with Vince mm -hmm. about, you know, we were mid-card, you know, the Rockers, mid-carders, and we asked him, like, and so, and so our pay stayed after so long. Our, we, our pay stayed. It wasn't bad pay. But we was wanting to climb up the ladder, and we were working our ass off every night, 300 nights a year. Uh, had great matches with everybody. I can't think of any tag team we had a bad match with. Even what they used to call jobbers, and I hate that term. Yeah. Uh, extras, enhancers, I like, I like that. I'll go with that. Um, we had great matches with them. And uh, so we, you know, we were sitting there watching the other guys keep going up the ladder, getting more money. It wasn't so much the money, but it was too. I mean, you, you want to get paid for the work you put in. I mean, if you're doing better than some guy that's making 250 a year, you're, you're only making 150,000 a year. Well, shit, <laughs> what, what, what are we doing wrong? Right. <laughs> you know, and um, but we had the meeting with Vince basically and said, what can we do to elevate ourselves from mid-carters? 
that at least can we get to upper mid card? <laughs> yeah. Which I think we actually that's where we were, but we wanted to dip into the upper, the the lower high you know high cards, um, and and the money would come with that as right, you sure. move up. Yep. The money comes with it. So we uh, had a meeting with Vince. We told him. And he was happy, but you know, we said we said don't give us anything. And this is true. We we didn't want anything just given to us. We'll do more work, whatever it takes to get up there higher. I mean, we'll work in double shots uh, all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, just yeah, just saying yeah. anything, whatever it takes. We're not saying hey, give us anything. Just let us know what to do, and we'll do it. That's basically was our meeting. He was happy about it. We believed him, and we left. Um, happy, you know, like figuring, okay, well, maybe we'll get to go up the ladder soon now. And about two, maybe three weeks after that, no, it wasn't even that long, um, Sean had bought a motorcycle. All the boys go through phases, or they did back then. At one point, everybody was wearing cowboy boots, which you know, I'm not a big fan of those, so I never got into that one. Mm -hmm. But everybody's wearing the big cowboy boots and showing each other off. Look, mine's snakeskin, mountain mine or alligator, mine's possum Peter. They, they were all kinds of them. But as Sean got into that. Um, but then another phase, they were buying motorcycles. When would they have time to ride them? Well, you're you on, on the road three days off. Yeah, yeah. you're on your two days <laughs> off. <laughs> you two to, it was like we do 20 days, then you get two or three days off, and then you come back and do a short tour. 15 days, and you get a day off. But, um, but you know, Lex, Lex went and bought, Lex Luger, he went and bought a motor. All the boys were getting into the motorcycle thing. And uh, they, uh, I mean, all of them, Amble, Davy Boy, uh, but, but Lex, got, Lex bought one. Just bought it, paid it off cash, drove it off the lot, and right in front of the lot, crashed it. <laughs> <laughs> and and the value dropped oh, like yeah, a half yeah. right there in front of the building. But uh, then Sean bought one, and I was telling him, no, man, no, 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 no. No, you see what happened to the Lex, you know. Don't, let's don't take the chance. No, I'll be fine. Well, he, he rode and he got caught, and it started raining a little bit. Am I talking a lot? No, you're talking a lot, yeah, but it's good stuff. Because I'm, I'm like, damn, that voice is familiar, and I realized it was me. <laughs> but um, it, it, it was a uh, uh, sprinkle, or it just started, and I guess the road gets real slick when that happens. Um, and he was coming to the rain track, uh, railroad tracks, and he went to slow down, you know, try to slow, and it started skidding. He put his foot down, and it spun, and it tore his knee out. Oh, okay. And if you remember at SummerSlam, when he came out, there was a SummerSlam that he came out. I had to wrestle against Hercules and uh, Paul Roma. Who were they? Power, 90. Power and Glory. Oh, Power and Glory. Yeah, that was SummerSlam 90. Yeah, in Philly. Yeah. Oh, you know it in a year. Okay. No? <laughs> Hell, man. Oh, man. Well. Encyclopedia right here. Um, <laughs> but so, uh, you know, Sean tore his knee out, and he was out for about three or four weeks. Three weeks. I think it was like longer than that because might have been, yeah. when you guys did the, the next loop and came through Boston, the, the promoted tag match turned into a singles with you and Roma. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when while um, Sean was out, Shane Douglas, remember Shane? Yeah. He, he filled in because I guess he looked similar, you know, still you know, looked like the Rockers even though. And, and I love Shane Depp. We had great matches too um, with everybody. But uh, yeah, but just, so anyway, Sean. The point was, Sean was at home at the time. He lived in Tampa. I lived in Orlando. Uh, our first houses we bought. Oh and really? We was, yeah, we was gonna try to live in the same city because we had done it everywhere we had lived around the you know country, as we were coming up. We always lived in the same apartment complex. Mm -hmm. You know, when we lived in Kansas City, and then we moved up to Minneapolis, and then we went down to Nashville. We were always right close together. So we really wanted to uh, get our houses in the same city, but it ended up close enough, Tampa and Orlando, yeah. just like an hour and a half. Uh, and I think we both did it mainly for our girls. His girl, I think, liked it, Tampa. I actually loved Tampa, but I did move there eventually. But Orlando, the girl I was seeing at the time, she was a model and an actress, and oh. Orlando was a good uh, place for that. So I got the place in Orlando. Anyway, uh, at the end of the tour, like it was about a two week tour, or 14 days, 17 days, something like that. We had to go shoot a commercial. Um, and so I went from wherever the heck I wrestled in Chicago that, that went, you know, the night before, flying to Atlanta 
and it was a cereal. It was called Superstar Superstar cereal. Remember that one? I think I'm familiar with the cereal. It was but keep bigger going. up yeah. here. Wasn't North. it? Was it cereal or was it cookies? They had cookies too, but it was. Cereal. They were both. Okay. This okay. was cereal. Yeah, and it was bigger up here in the Northeast and down, you know, rest yeah. of the rest of everywhere. But so we flew in. This we're about to get in trouble telling the numbers. <laughs> we flew in. Uh, Sean was home, so they flew him up from Tampa mm -hmm. into Atlanta, just shooting a commercial. And it was some some of the guys. It wasn't a whole bunch of us. It was a uh, what were the natural disasters? Typhoon and, and earthquake. earthquake yeah. Uh, they were there. The Road Warriors. And, and Sean, as a team, you know, Sid was there, uh, a couple of other guys for singles, I can't think right now. But so, when you do commercials, uh, if you got more than three speaking words, you get the first commercial you're given, you're, you're allowed. The second commercial, if it's more than three words, you have to join SAG, Screen oh, really? Actors yeah. Guild. Yeah, well, back then, I don't know what the rule is now. But, um, so, so the people from the Screen Acting Guild, they don't know that, like, Hey, guys, see what other guys are making? They go crazy. So they just hand the stacks at Fine Y'all's because they didn't know who yeah, any right, of us right, were. Right, right. Fine Y'all's. <laughs> so we're leaping through them and we're seeing here's the numbers. Sorry, but this was 1989 or something, 90. Pay would be way higher today. Um, we're looking and everybody's getting 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. We ain't found ours yet, but we're thinking, that's, you know, each would be yep, 10,000 yep, each. Yep, yep. So we're like, that's a good little payday. You know, all you do is smile and say, hey, it's great cereal. You know it sucked. I had a bite. But, <laughs> but so uh, they, they uh, uh, were going through, leaking through the papers. Everybody's got 10. Then we come across ours. And, and 5,000 and 5,000. Yeah, that's how I was told it happened. Yeah. You and, guys got half of what Joe and Mike did. Yeah. The and, Road and, Warrior, and, Legion of Doom. Yeah. And, 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 and Sean got pissed. He goes, are they just... What did they give the road warriors again? He's flipping through to see if they split the tag teams. You know, the yep. single guy's getting 10, maybe the tag. No. You were the only ones that got cut. Yeah, yeah, even the natural disasters, not putting them down. I love them to death. Um, but, I mean, they were around for six months as a team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. not a And they're run. getting what, double what we're getting. Who we? Yeah, okay. But so Sean had a fit. And he, he, like, threw the papers in there and, and, you know, did a little tantrum. He was like that back then. He's good. You know, he's calmed down now. Now, he's, you know, older and Christian life. He, he's, he's very good. But he was, he was hard to handle. He admits that back in his younger days. But he, uh, he threw the papers in there. I said, we, we got to sign them. <laughs> we got we to we look for them. <laughs> he had to sign them, yeah. Yeah, man, he, was, he was like, that's it. Fuck it. We just talked to Vince about this. Fuck this shit. Let's go quit. Let's go quit. No, he's temperamental like that, but I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm like, Jay said nothing. Well, you want to quit? Let's quit. You know, because it was true. I, I, I was a little angry, too. You know, we just had this talk, and he said, you just did it. Everything's going to be fine, meaning you're going to go up the ladder, your money. That was like a slap in the face. Yeah. Here's your first opportunity to prove what you said, and you did the opposite. You get... I'm not putting them down, uh, talking about Earthquake and, and him, because I love them to death. Um, the one, you know, what's his name, Earthquake? You know, John Tenta, yeah. Uh, great guy, man. I love him. Love Tugboat. We still get to see each other out in personal appearances and stuff, conventions, wrestle cons. Um, and he's still big and healthy. Big guy, yeah. <laughs> but, he, um, you know, there was just no way to natural disasters. They were, they were never even meant to go and be, be together for few months and that's going to be it so they could turn them against each other and they were getting double us <laughs> I mean, we're making we're turning out every show we're getting the best match every night every night 300 nights a year best matches of the night in a lot of cases longest matches of the night yeah. in many many cases yeah Oh my God. And going on last when the main event is would go on before an yeah, because yep. like Hulk Hogan I love him too love you he he like he didn't want to get caught up in all the people at the yeah, end. Yeah. So and then, that on, did make sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does. Yeah. So he would always, you know, the big main event like that. He goes on before intermission, gets the hell on out of there. Guess who had to be the last match to get caught up in there? <laughs> it wasn't that bad unless he was in Madison Square Garden. Oh like, my God! <laughs> trying know. to get out of there? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh God! They'll beat your car up. <laughs> but uh, so anyway. There was a payphone, but this tells you how long ago. <laughs> it was a payphone on the wall at the studio where we'd shot the thing, and Sean was bitching, and, you know, like, we, we did do the, assign the paper and, and, and do the commercial. 
But he was like, that's it, let's quit, let's quit. Because we <laughs> wanted that little paycheck. But um, I, I was, he says, go call him, tell him we quit. He tells me that. He, he wanted you me. to call the office. Yeah, because I, I, was, I handled most of our business up to that mm -hmm. point. He never handled business, and he says it in his book. That's the, what I'm telling you. You'll catch a lie in his book because he tells the same story two different ways. One time he, in one chapter he says, well, Marty handled all the business stuff. So when it would look like it was something bad, Marty handled all our business. A few chapters later, when it's you know, him doing good, well, I handled all the business stuff. Marty was never into that. Okay, <laughs> you said two different, pick one, and the other one's going to be a lie. <laughs> it right. can't both be true, right? But anyway, he said, uh, you know, let's quit. Fuck, fuck it. We just had that meeting. Fuck it. Let's quit. Uh, it didn't mean nothing to me because I was okay. And we've been talking anyway, moving on to WCW. Uh, and Dusty Rose and Flair were down there. I, I was pretty good with them. Um, I, I didn't know Sean's relationship with him. Uh, Dusty and I, rest in peace. Dusty and I used to play paper football. You remember? remember yeah, 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 yeah. I remember doing it in catch school, it. yeah. And Because and, when he came up to WWE, uh, F, at first, nobody would have anything to do with him, mainly because he was a booker at WCW. Yep. He didn't fire a few people. <laughs> so so everybody, man, he, they hated him. So me and him would sit together and play football all the time. So, you know, when, when you do that, you get to talking and you get closer. You bond in a way. But, you know, he was, he'd gone back to WCW. Uh, I went to up to the payphone and called. Um, what do you mean, swallow this strawberry? Where do you get stra strawberry root beer? Is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> strawberry root beer can be delicious. Yeah. Uh, and and what's John Cena's dad got? He's got his own line of uh, Fabo Pop root beer and uh, other oh, sodas. Man, I'm gonna have to try some of that. There you go. He's a good guy. He's a great man. I met him once He's or a great twice. Man. Great guy. Um, where was I talking? <laughs> We were talking about Sean oh, yeah. kind of so, so went back and forth in his book with reality. Yeah, yeah. and I go over to the pay phone, I call the office, and uh, Pat Patterson, who I love to death, Pat Patterson um, answers. Yeah, I asked for Vince, but I get, you know, can we speak to Vince, the secretary? And Pat Patterson, Marty, what's going on? How are you doing? I said, hey, I need to speak to Vince. Uh, Vince is kind of busy right now, Marty, can I help you? I said, yeah, me and Sean just want to know how to put in our notice. Can we do it in writing or can we verbally? He goes, oh, Jesus Christ, mighty, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and write to Vince. <laughs> and went he was probably to listening on speakerphone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, what's going on? And I'm like, hey, Vince, how you doing? Uh, and I love Vince to death, too. He's always been good to me. You know, there's a couple of things that were weird, but not, not sexual weird. Nothing, nothing like that. All right. All right. We'll clarify that. You're looking at me. I'm, no. Well, I'm, I can't look off into space. <laughs> well, I, I'm doing it. <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, Vince is like, what's going on? He, like you said, he probably was, because in his voice, he already had Knew concern. what was happening, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I said, man, I'm sorry about my hair, y'all. It looks like Captain Cave, man. Captain Cave Genetti. You got a hat? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just got to deal with it, man. I'm sorry. My haircut people went out of business, pandemic. But uh, so, so uh, Vince, uh, I said, Vince, we, we just want to do it properly. Because back like then, you, you give a 90-day notice. And the purpose of that, so they, they beat you down for 90 Drive days. Yeah. yeah, so when you go somewhere else, well, damn, he was getting beat for the last, you know, it seems like longer. Yeah. Um, especially to the person you're <laughs> getting beat down. But so uh, I said, Vince, we want to do this properly. Do we need to write? What, how do we give our notice? Well, what's the problem? I said, no, nah, there's no more talking. And Sean is standing right here. You know, I'm on the phone he's right listening, here. Yeah. Sean's right there. So he's not here in Vince's part because there was no speakerphone on the payphone. But he's hearing what I'm saying. So uh, I said, no, nah, Vince, we already, we've already talked about this, the money situation. And... Uh, there's no more talking. We just you know, we just got our, our saw our, our contract or our agreement for this commercial, and you kind of lied to us, and and so we're just gonna put our notice in. And he says something to the effect of, "Well, uh, you want to come in and talk at TV?" I said, "No, nah, there's no more talking." Now Sean's hearing this, and he's just sitting there, not saying a word, just listening. And um, I said, uh, "But so how do we do this notice?" He goes, "Well, let me look." <laughs> and he goes, I really, I really wish you wouldn't, you would reconsider. I said, nah, we've, we've done everything right. 
and he's looking at you can hear him flipping pages he goes well he goes survivor series is in three weeks i'll let y'all finish up there now me i got ecstatic about that it was like three weeks and versus 90 days right and if you lose a survivor series nobody gives a shit about that I mean, boy, you got 48 teams, tag teams, yeah, the thing, yeah. so you lost, okay. Um, but they, uh, you know, and I, said, oh, I got happy. I was thanking Vince. Oh, thank you so much, Vince. Thank you, thank you, hung up. And Sean, because I was thanking him, he evidently he was thinking, what do you say, what do you say? He was like a little puppy. What do you say, what do you say? I said, you're not going to believe this, bro. What, what, what? He's, he's going to let us finish up the Survivor Series, which was three weeks. I mean, there was no TV taping. That was it. So you get beat on TV one time at a pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, respectable enough yeah, on a pay-per-view, yeah. Yeah, and, and so uh, me being glad we're not getting beat for 90 days, I'm happy. And Sean's, when I said he's letting us finish up the Survivor Series, this was Sean's reaction. He's fucking going to let us quit? Soon as he said that, I'm like, what do you mean, let us quit? Didn't you just tell me to come over here and tell him we quit? But he's going to fucking let us? All right, come on. Sean was doing us a favor. Did you not see that? He's fucking going to let us quit. He was, and he, I think he walked off talking to himself, probably saying that. But so that's what happened. Now we get our flights home. I get in the plane, get back to Orlando. He goes to Tampa and... Uh, my voicemail back then, you're on the road, <laughs> voicemail. Must be loaded, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not only that, but when's the last time an answer machine? I mean, oh, <laughs> remember yeah. those yeah. things? Or even a house phone. Yeah. <laughs> so I go home, and there's all kinds of messages. And very last one, after about 20 minutes to listen, Marty, it's Vince. Call me at the office, please, as soon as you get home. And it was like 520, so I'm thinking, or 530, I'm thinking, he, you know, he ain't going to be at the office now. But I went ahead and called, and he was there. And he, uh, he says, well, Marty, he goes, I uh, really don't know what to say about the decision you made, he says, but you're welcome to stay on and wrestle singles. And I was like, no, nah, Vince, I mean, thank you, but Sean and I made this decision together. I'm not going to go behind his back. And he goes, well, that's kind of funny. I just talked to him, and he said that was, he had nothing to do with that. That was all you're doing. So he's going to stay on. Uh-huh. And I didn't even say bye, I don't think. I hung up, called Sean, and said, Sean, tell me it ain't true. Tell me it ain't true. And he was quiet. He knew. Um, but what? I said, you called Vince and said that was my idea. You had nothing to do with it, and you're going to stay on. And he says, Marty, on the flight home, I got to think about it. And man, you're, you're single, I'm married, your house is, I paid my house off in the first year. Um, you were smart what, about it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate paying the interest. I had the money, it wasn't that much, like 150,000 place. Unlike the million, everybody goes and get the million dollar homes and then if you, you get laid off or, or let go two months later, <laughs> now what? What are you gonna do, right, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, you know, I had enough and, and, and don't, like I said, I hate paying interest, why? Why? <laughs> I'm that way with credit cards. Yeah. Hate to pay. I haven't paid interest in 10 years. Yeah, man. Yeah, ain't no sense crazy. in it. Why well, give them the money you right. took back jobs yeah. for? <laughs> but so, uh, you know, Sean, he said, you know, your house is paid off. I've still got to pay on mine. I just can't quit right now. I said, well, well, that's fine. Why didn't you tell me that rather than tell me to call Benz and say I quit? So we quit. And he, you know, he got real quiet and he just kept saying he was sorry. Or who was the bad guy, who looked like the bad guy. I call up and quit. And he, he's Vince, that's Vince's boy. Vince loves Sean to death. I don't think he likes me, but I mean, he just has this thing about Sean. Uh, Sean can do no wrong. But so they, he you know, called Vince back and he said, we'll have a meeting at TV. Next TV coming up was, was like a couple weeks or something or other. And, um, Sure enough, all the boys, it's the TV tape and all the boys there. One agent, I'm not going to say uh, Tony Greer's name, but went around and because he'd heard about it. <laughs> Why are you laughing, man? I know Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and an another agent that, I think he died though, Chief Strongbow. Yeah. I'm not, but I don't want to say his name either. But a uh, couple of agents 
got the word, and they went around and told all the boys. Sean stabbed his partner. No, back then, like again, I'm not talking Sean down because I love him to death. I love him to death back then. He was just, but um, they, you know, in particularly Strongbow, but I'm not going to say his name. Yeah. Um, didn't like Sean a lot, and and he went and told everybody about Sean stabbed his partner in the back, stabbed him in the back, and from when I got there, all, a lot of the boys, not all the boys, but a lot of the boys. I remember Wayne Bloom in particular. I remember uh, Wayne to train Bloom and Beverly Brothers in WWE. Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, you got it all. Um, what, uh, Wayne comes up. That's fucked up what Sean did. And we all were together in Minneapolis. To, you yeah, know. AWA time. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, it was there's a bond there. And so Wayne was pissed about something like that. Marty, I'll go beat his ass for you. You want me to go beat his ass? I, no, man, no. I mean, if it came down to that, I can handle myself. I don't need y'all to go. Because two or three people got really upset about yeah. it. I guess they th thought he was a little too arrogant back then. Um, but you know, it's like, no, 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 we'll figure it out. We'll get it. Now, nah, y'all, leave him alone, leave him alone. But it was just amazing to me that everybody knew. Gosh, damn, some, some agents had some big mouths, you know. But, um, but it was, it was, it was um, kind of nice, you know, that the boys cared. I don't know if they cared about me as much as they despised him. <laughs> it might have been a combo. Maybe a little of both, yeah. 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 And so, uh, you know, end up with, that's we had a meeting with Vince and, that's when uh, he said, well, we're going to split you guys off. And what we want to do, Marty, is make a star, a star out of Sean. And like, well, that's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, nice and, to hear. And, and, and I might have huh? done like this when he said it. <laughs> so, and I'm like, and I'm thinking about when they split tag teams up. Yeah. Am I talking a lot? No. Oh, no, you are. <laughs> but that's the purpose of the show. Yes, the talk show. Ain't it? Exactly. <laughs> But so um, it, 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 I'm sitting there knowing what they do with tag teams. The one that they push, the other one's going, he's fizzled, faded out. So that's what I'm thinking, like, wow, <laughs> I brought us this far. I mean, because you know, Sean has actually told it in a couple of interviews. Um, while he was good as he could be, uh, he was very good. I was teaching him a lot in the younger years. He eventually passed me, and then I'm learning from him. <laughs> like yeah. But at the beginning, to that point, I'd brought him there. And now they're going to run with him. And, and, I, and I said, Vince, can I talk to you after the meeting? Uh, and Vince did say this. He said, uh, we see a superstar in Sean. Marty don't quite see that with you right now. <laughs> Thanks. You got any more <laughs> shit to throw on me? <laughs> um, but so uh, I said, can I talk to you? Uh, you know, when we're in the end of the meeting, he goes, sure. And, you know, Sean left, and I said, um, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? Like, meaning, are you going to fade me out? And he knew what I was asking. He goes, that'll be up to you. I said, well, you said that you don't see Superstar in me. I said, will you give me the opportunity to prove you wrong? He smiled. He goes, I like that attitude. Still. Still faced me out, you <laughs> bastard. No, no, I didn't. But so that is what really happened. That's how it happened. Then the next thing, Sean and I got together. This is another thing. And we were talking about how to do the split. And, and then, you know, we came up with doing it like a Piper's Pit or, or Beefcake's thing. Mm -hmm. And then we thought about the, the barber shop. And what if and we started coming up with like, throw one of us, you throw me through the window. That was basically I had suggested to him. He just wanted to like to go in the barbershop and do it. But I'm like, what if you, what if you, I didn't mention the super kick. Because we did everything together. But I said, what if you end up throwing me through the window? And I'll come back and I got some blood and stuff. He goes, we can't bleed on TV. Remember, we can't bleed on TV. I said, I, it'll be an accident. <laughs> but uh, I said, and then you, you pick up a bottle of alcohol and like pour it on, because you know that in, in open cuts. Burns, I mean, that's even worse. And he's like, that sounds good, except the alcohol might be overkill. And it might have been, you know. Yeah. But, but, but basically what I'm saying is we put the story together, uh, but it was my idea. And then next thing I know, he's off telling everybody, I came up with the idea, because it's iconic. It's 27 years People later. People still talk about it and love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, uh, another thing, he, is, he had, on interviews I'd seen, he said, yeah, I actually came up with that for when we was going to wrestle the Nasty Boys. They had already gone down to WCW. They weren't even there. <laughs> that's, that's. Well, they were still there during that barbershop. Were they there? Yeah, the Nasties were there until early 93, and yeah, that happened we, in early 92. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
man, it's so hard to know them because they were in and out. And I got a good knob story to tell, a nasty boy story. Well, I want to get to that time period, but I want to. I'm interested but, but, to see how this story culminates. Yeah, let me, and we'll let, go let from me lock it out. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, barbershop window dinner thing. Okay, I, I told this story before. Uh, Sean went and, and did an interview, and um, on there, Sean was saying, "Well, you know." You know, Marty kind of, he screwed things up and I just couldn't deal with it no more. And, you know, I had no idea that he was, he was telling that story. Yeah. That, you know, he told Vince, he was, like it really happened that way. Like Marty did stuff behind my back and, oh, and I brought up Dusty Rose and Flair for a reason. I'm not going to say which one, uh, but rest in peace. <laughs> but but they, I called the WCW because yeah, yeah. Sean's like, you, you're kind of close with him. Call him. I said, okay. You know, that was part of Sean's bow and all up. Okay, let's quit. Because he knew that, you know, you got the ends with WCW with those guys. To call him. And I did. And uh, talked to, like I said, I'm not going to say the one's name. Uh, but but he, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and he said, Marty, let me tell you something, Daddy. <laughs> you guess which one it was now. <laughs> but he said, we would take you in a minute, but your partner's got heat here. Okay, so now I, you think I want to go back and tell Sean, like, they want yeah. me, but they don't want. So I just said, I can't, I can't get nothing done. I took it like that. And so then that's where Sean ran with the, Marty, he, he, he told me he had all these people, and then uh, when it come down to it, he couldn't talk to nobody. He had lied to me. He had nothing, no connection. I got that thrown on me because I was trying to save his feelings and saying, right. I just they can't don't want come. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say, you know, tell him that. But tell you something, daddy. <laughs> but uh, so then, you know, here's, here's a little upsetting. I hate to get into the religion part of it. Uh, but when we did a rocker reunion, Mm -hmm. uh, I was there. Uh, I was. I had brought a girl with me to to get her backstage. Where you know some of the guys bring their wife, but it's it's you know everybody didn't know that you, know, you don't get to bring girlfriends back. Uh, you know backstage. So I had to go around. I hate to say it, but I lied about it. Uh, I said it was my wife, so they would let her backstage. Uh, Pretty, pretty young black girl, and my best one of my best wrestling students, Bobby Sanford, a uh, black guy. So, and they were friends. That's actually how I met her. Mm -hmm. So uh, I told everybody at WWE, that's my wife, and that's her brother. So that's my brother-in-law. Oh, okay. And there's a reason I, I bring that up. Uh, the color, the color shouldn't have came in except for the, the relationship of brother-in-law. So Sean comes up to me. Um, <clears throat> he was doing his book, the first book. You know, and now he's religious and everything. So he called me over because uh, we, we were at the, like during the day of the TV, mm -hmm. you're around all day and you're out about by the arena, by the ring. And he says, I got to talk to you about something. And he did the eye cross. And I thought, oh, <laughs> this is going to get serious. <laughs> what have I done now? And, and we were getting along good too. Uh, you know, we always do when, we really always did. Uh, there was just one bad night. And other than that, we always did well. Um, you know, I, I didn't appreciate some of the burying me with lies and shit, but uh, whatever. That's in the past. Um, Bobby was his name, Bobby Sanford. He, uh, he calls, he says, uh, get your brother-in-law over here. I want him to hear this. I want to get this correct for the book. He goes, because I'm in that spot uh, for the book. And I heard you remember, and Bobby, he called us, Bobby, come here. Bobby comes over. So Bobby's a witness. I mean, you, if anybody thinks I'm lying, I got one witness. All right, there you go. And then actually more people know exactly what happened as far as the boys. So, I mean, I, I got no reason to lie. I mean, I don't, I don't care to. What's it going to do for me? If it's going to get me a million dollars, i think about it. <laughs> but now, um, he said, I heard you, you remember what happened when, when we at the serial taping a little differently than what I remember. What do you remember? That's the way he asked me, right? Mm -hmm. And he was called Bobby over because he wanted him to hear. <clears throat> and Bobby's sitting there. You know, Bobby was, you know, a student, uh, very good, one of the best. And he was like cool to meet Sean. You know, he, he, you know, he was kind of like your boy today, kind of hog Evan, like, oh, cool, cool. Um, and I said, Sean, I remember how it happened. 
He goes, well, well how did it happen? <laughs> right, he asked me. And I told him exactly what I told y'all, except maybe even shorten it, shorten it, because we all got such uh, short attention spans. Yeah. Am I talking too much? No. Okay. <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, he, uh, he uh, I told him everything. Now, right in front of Bobby, it didn't surprise me, but Bobby just kind of grinned and put his head there. He goes, damn it. How do you remember so many things when you did more drugs than me? And he turned around and kind of stomped off. Like, he, uh, 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 uh. guess what he put in the book? The other way, the way he originally told it. And his whole purpose of calling Bobby over, calling me over, and going through that whole thing is so, because he's a Christian now, he wants to get things right, and he's at that point in the book. He gets told, he has a little tantrum. It was a funny tantrum, it wasn't like a mad... Yeah, it wasn't anger. Yeah, yeah he, he, he was just like, damn, how do you remember such... I mean, you did way more drugs than I did. <laughs> uh, but so, then, then I read the book, and I'm like, wow. And then Bobby, when he read the book, he called me, he goes, he just lied real bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, well, I tell you, we have got a, a boatload of stories with you, Marty, coming up over the episodes we're going to tape today. We're hoping to have you back even in September again to tape more. So we got, uh, we like to call our Wrestling Insiders series just uh, uh, Memories and Legends, and that's what it's all about. Uh, we, maybe we could even do an episode and break down Sean's book point by point. That would be you very... You want to get me in trouble, don't that'd you? That would be very... Well, I, Man, I, we're doing good. Me and Sean are doing good. Something like that might... He ain't well, going to piss me off. I've had to deal with this shit. But he's <laughs> changed his life, you know, so there's so many road stories. I got my book three quarters of the way done. There's so many road stories that I have to alter. When I say alter, no, I, I won't change it. Not a damn thing. I'm not going to tell a lie anywhere in the book because to me. You're in the middle of a book right now? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. great. We can promote it right like, here. It's been for like three or four years. We can promote it right here. Hey, the MJ in the House book is coming. I don't know what we're going to call it. Don't wish me luck because it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, um, shit, I forgot what to say. What was I saying? Oh, but, oh, there's so many stories I can't tell. The Oh, I know what I'm saying. I would never lie in, the, in, in at all, really, but in a book because if you tell one lie, Who's to believe the rest right. of the shit? Would, it, would you guess what's true and what's yep. not? Um, so I never would, would, would put something um, in, in. If I don't know it real well, that this way it happened, I won't even put it. If I, I kind of remember this. I kind of, because Beeper, I love him to death. He, his version of the, the barbershop's a little bit different <laughs> than, than what it actually was. All but, right, well, you know what? I want to get there, too, especially as we try and do this timeline. Of, and be for uh, our boys, I mean, we're good. We're going to hopefully, <laughs> we're going to hopefully have him here later on in 2020. Knock on wood, with everything going on with the virus. But right now, we're going to take a timeout. Um, yes, I we didn't. We, we need to get to the actual point of the episode. But Marty, this is great taking us on an adventure, much like Tony does when we're at his house Tuesday nights at nine o'clock. So right now, we're going to take a brief timeout, fans. When we come back, we're going to look at the Rockers entering the world. Wrestling Federation. It's going to be a great time period in the second half of 1988. Stand by.